we're just um i think we're trying to document our existence basically you know uh, if i listen back to the albums now i can remember exactly how i felt when we wrote them and so they almost become like pictures and so i think the inspiration is just our immediate environment and what that brings It's lovely to meet you here on Zoom, Hunter. Yes, so sorry about the, the messing around. I'm glad no, we finally no. got a chance to do it. No, that's fine. And uh, it looks so cloudy there. Uh, where are you in Johannesburg or Cape Town? Uh, I'm in Cape Town. Yeah, it's seriously <laughs> autumn. Oh, okay. <laughs> and cold. Uh, I see you with your jacket. Yes. Yeah, we're not used to it. So I mean, it's probably like 13. It's not much colder, but uh, to us, that's pretty cold. Yeah, yeah, I know that's true. But Hunter, and first of all, I want to ask you, you you have a, a stage name, Hun, uh, Hunter Van Koch, is it? Oh, uh, yes, it's actually, it's just for my uh, social media tags, because Hunter Kennedy's always taken. And so, so I, uh, in, in the first band I played in, uh, Folk of Belisigar, our lead singer, Franja, changed his surname, because his dad... Uh, is a Dutch Reformed minister, and he asked him to change the surname so there wouldn't be a clear link between the two. And so I just kind of adopted that name as well. Our bassist, uh, Vainant, uh, is also Falky van Koch, so it's kind of a bit of a, a road family, I guess. Oh, oh, I see. But that's so, that's great. I mean, that's so unique, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But now you, you talk about you were a part of a, a band, um, a Folk of Policicar, um, and uh, uh, but now you are with um, Jevels Fantastis. It's the group. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'm still a part of Folk of Policicar. They're actually we're, they're just running concurrently. I basically just play in two bands. Oh, I see. Okay, so you you're in demand. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe I think it's. It, we didn't really think about it when we just went for it, you know what I mean? And now okay. we've kind of figured out a way to um, to run the diary. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there's people that can replace me if we're double double booked and stuff. Okay. But now how are these two bands, um, how do they differ or and how much are they uh, the same? Mm. Uh, that, that interesting question, I guess. Uh, to me, it's pretty obvious how they differ. Look, they're both Afrikaans bands, and I guess in the, in a broader sense, they can both be classified as rock. But uh, Fogo Felicicar, uh, maybe you can tell from the name, it's not necessarily for the whole family. You know what I mean? It's like angsty, mm -hmm. angsty kind of punk rock uh, stuff, like maybe a bit harder uh, with a little bit leaning towards sort of uh, political commentary, social political commentary, maybe more, something okay. like that. And uh, the Evils Fantastis, we put we put that band together to sort of be a band that the whole family can listen to in the car, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, both both bands I think falls to sort of the alternative side of the spectrum. Um, but yeah, we'll, with the Evils, we'll incorporate a lot more electronic uh, elements and sort of more production. Uh, I don't know what to call that. More production tricks, maybe, uh, and yeah, sort of pop. Um, kind of running with the times kind of thing if that makes any sense to you yeah but uh, uh, so but the name Jevels Fantastis uh, where did you come up with that name we were struggling to find a name actually and on that specific day we had drank about two jugs of margaritas <laughs> okay. and someone just um, someone where we live there in Babel, just outside, there's a, a wine region called Durbanville Hills. And mm -hmm. um, uh, somewhere, we can't remember who, but someone in the party said, um, why don't we just call ourselves the Evils? And then someone else said, fantastic, like, that's a fantastic idea. But then that mm -hmm. phrase sort of stuck. Oh, I see. Yeah. But that's <laughs> great. I mean, that that's also very unique. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just go with the flow, I guess. 
Yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. I've I've also spoken to a few um, people in in rock bands, and this is also so interesting how they came up with the ideas. And it's also always these random ideas, you know, that they yes. they struggle so so long to get the name, and then suddenly just somebody says something, and and the name is there. Yeah, it, I guess the it's we forget that the like. It's not the name that makes the band great or whatever, you know what I mean? So yeah. kind of the other way around. But yeah. yeah, you do get stuck in like tunnel vision when you're trying to find a name. So yeah. yeah. But um now in South Africa, I mean things changed a lot. And I think there was I saw a documentary um where uh it was, you know, they talked about how things changed in the eighties already. Uh, you know the, the the style of music changed in Afrikaans because Afrikaans used to be sort of more towards it's nature and the birds and the bees and that that sort of naive type oh, right. of music, yeah. And then it started changing where you really got these singer songwriters uh, coming up and and writing really about uh, like you say political things, also feelings, you know, also that type of thing. Who who is the inspiration for your band? Who is the inspiration for the for the songs you are singing? Um, yeah, I think what you uh, what uh, when you say that, I immediately think of the the full fray movement, which kind of roughly translates to uh, free as a bird. And uh, the uh, yeah, I was a little I was born in eighty two, but sort of only started maybe noticing political things at about 12, you know? And so uh, that was a little after the full Fred movement happened and they were sort of a, a political folk, uh, like 50s rock and roll boogie. It was kind of around there, you know? Um, South Africa is always a bit behind, I think. So it's interesting to me, like that in the eighties, the the um, uh, what it's not dissent, but like you know, the anti, the protest music was. It kind of sounded like fifties rock and roll, which I just oh, find yeah. extremely interesting. And uh, the, and that was a guy called Kuskom Ach uh, Johannes Karkorol, and uh, his album was called Yet Kriev, uh, mm. which which translates to eat crayfish, but it was sort of a jibe at the rich uh, white people of South Africa, you know, the privileged uh, white people. That that album really influenced me and my political thought and sort of changed the way that I thought of Afrikaans as a uh, a way to express myself. There was also a guy called Kurs Kumbais, who was kind of like a Bob Dylan figure, uh, folky, you know, just him and his guitar, sort of the older Bob Dylan, but he was a bit more scathing and almost humorous uh which was or a, a big influence on us he was the, he was the first one i heard swear like in a song in afrikaans and that obviously influenced us with the name um mm -hmm. yeah and then uh for for the yevils i think it'll be it's they called it lyric and musik musik and lyric i think mm -hmm. and uh there was a guy sort of at the end of that movement uh lucas maria that uh, from that era that I think influenced us. Into the 90s, there wasn't a lot of Afrikaans music happening or not a lot of um, new things were happening. The blues kind of creeped in, like dire straight sea sort of sounds. And uh, I think we were more into a band of Afrikaans speaking people, but they made alternative music. They, they're called the Springbok Nude Girls. And it's it's a weird mix of stuff. It's, it's like, um, it's almost like Nirvana, but They've got these weird jazz breakdowns and oh, okay. and stuff. And they were sort of the first people from our generation to do something really alternative. And that was just post-94, I, I would say about 95, 96, you know, after we became a, a, a democratic uh, country, basically, or the 94 elections was a big watershed moment for our country. And Springboard Noodles was the first band to sort of push those limits further. Uh, by that time, a lot of the not sanctions, what do you call it? The, a lot of the censorship had dropped. So oh, they were okay. sort of the first band to embody the hedonistic rock and roll lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, after that, there was a band called Boo, uh, uh, a great actor and artist. Chris Chameleon led them and he would 
make his own dresses and sing like in an alien language and make all these weird sounds. You know, it was just so alternative. We just loved the way that they put on a, a show. It felt like you were actually watching a production rather than just someone playing. Not that that's really influenced us, but it, they sort of helped us to think about the show as a, a unit, I think. I, I could carry on, but I no, think but that those are fine. Yeah, so it's interesting. You, you It's a, a sort of eclectic. You 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 found all these bits and pieces uh, from from these uh, artists that you that you then incorporate in your in your way of doing it. Yes, I mean that it's obviously not the only. We were in our bands. We were quite heavily influenced by Western pop or uh, on the other hand punk music so it's kind of a combination of alternative Afrikaans and mm. international pop I would say yeah now uh, um, yeah. and and the audiences do you see uh, uh, the audience are is it mostly Afrikaans speaking or do you get uh, all because South Africa has got a lot of uh languages there's a lot of cultures yes. in south africa so who who are your audiences yeah i think because we're uh afrikaans it, it is limited uh but mm -hmm. it's yeah it, most most of our fans would be afrikaans speaking uh, but it does cross it does cross over a little bit but yeah i mean it's mostly afrikaans people yes <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> yeah so I mean, there, there, there were, there was a dream of maybe being able to be like Rammstein that could, or Sieger Ross, for instance. Uh, Rammstein is a German uh, industrial metal band, and uh, Sieger Ross is like an alternative band from Iceland, and they don't even apparently their first albums wasn't even sung in a language that exists. But there were, there was at a stage hopes that we would be able to cross over, even if we sing in a language no one understands but i mean it, it hasn't materialized yet oh okay well it's, you you never it's say still never fine. It is still <laughs> fine. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now who writes the songs in the band or is it collaborative in, you all write together yeah it's it's pretty collaborative i mean uh it's someone usually by you know now uh, we've been making music for i mean 20 years or so so mm -hmm. um in Folk of Polisikar, Johnny Derrider, he plays lead guitar and he's also a producer. Uh, he, he'll, most of the time he'll make the song and then I'll write the lyrics and the melody over that. Uh, sometimes Francois uh, writes the lyrics and a melody and sometimes I bring music to the table, you know? So that's yeah. Folk of Polisikar. With Diabol's Fantastis, uh, myself and Pierre, I would say, are mostly the lyricists and maybe the, yeah. And then Freddie is like the instrumentalist producer. And I mean, that's like a, a mixed bag. Everyone will add something, I think. Mm. And we sometimes work with other producers and stuff as well. But yeah, that's, that there's no set, there's oh, no okay. set formula. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and what, what, uh, what inspires you to write these specific songs? I mean, do you where do you get the inspiration from for the lyrics and the and the sort of uh, yeah the lyrics Themes, of the songs? Yeah. Um, I um I, I've it's always been hard to answer that question. I feel like I've recently kind of figured it out. <laughs> I think, okay, okay. I think we're just um I think we're trying to document our existence basically. You know. Uh, if I listen back to the albums now, I can remember exactly how I felt when we wrote them. And so they almost become like pictures. And so I think the inspiration is just our immediate environment and what that brings, you know, the whether it's being newly married and how that changes life or how that ch changes your worldview. Uh, so I think it's a documentary process, basically, that inspires us, you know. Mm. And so that helps to be as like honest as you would be to your journal kind of thing. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but it's yeah, yeah. something like that. But but that's uh, that's relatable then, you know, for the audience. So it, it's things that people live and that they can relate to then. Uh, hopefully, yes. I mean, uh, and yeah, obviously, it's not obviously not. 
everyone's not always on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. Yeah. songs are relevant to some people later in their life or whatever. But yeah, I mean, uh, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is we, we're not necessarily trying to uh, to package something for the mass market. We yeah uh, yeah we try to keep it real. I guess I just think in the in the long run it will be more interesting a hundred years from now. Maybe people would be able to extract some kind of uh, uh, feeling from it. You know of what people thought about life in the two thousands. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like you say, keeping it real because I mean, it's sometimes, and and it's also needed to to have lyrics that's just about love and about uh, whatever you know, the birds and the bees. But it's also, yes. you know, but it's also um, great to have lyrics that really has a meaning and that can be relatable even later. You know, like you say, in years to come, that that people can listen to it and really relate to the lyrics. Uh, like you do with the great, you know, with the great uh, songwriters that that you still, you know, from the from the seventies where you still listen to the music and it still has that that impact on you. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to do that. Hopefully, it works. You know, yeah. I mean? <laughs> it's something we aspire to, I guess. But you, I, I read somewhere that you also produce your own uh, music. You, you, do you have your own recording studio, or how does it work? No, you I have don't. A label. I'm not. A, yeah, I'm not a producer myself. And Pierre, mm. we we have a label that's kind of dormant now. But uh, mm. yeah, we um I, I, we released our own music, the Evil Fantastis, on a label called Supra Familias, and we did some of our friends' um, first records. There's an uh, Afrikaans rapper called called Jack Parra, and um, uh, Franchoff who plays with me in Folk of Police got his solo album. We released those albums on our label. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a producer. I don't know. I can't work the computer. I don't know what any of those knobs oh, do. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're like a group of friends and each one has his um, realm of expertise, you know? So I, mm. it, it makes for great teamwork sort of between all the bands and across the board. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of a unique situation because most of us know each other from high school. So it's been long, long relationships. Amazing. So did you all study music or what was the background? No, no, no not at all. No. Okay. I consider myself to be a terrible instrumentalist and, to, you know, playing, just being able to play the most basic thing on the instrument sort of just afforded me to be a part of the band, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm okay. just a songwriter, I guess. Uh mm -hmm. but no, no one studied music in our in in our specific circle. I mean, it's more sort of the counterculture skateboarding punk rock garage band thing oh, than, okay. than studying music. I mean, some of the guys studied like a audio design course, you know, mm -hmm. um but it's sort of a diploma, but no, nothing Nothing fancy. Well, I don't know. It, it should probably be expected, but the, the two producers we work with the most, which is Fred and Artoch, that plays in the and Johnny, that another plays in Fogov, both of their moms were music teachers. So maybe they just oh, absorbed, okay. uh, maybe they just absorbed all the knowledge. <laughs> okay. And, and just and just exude it out to you towards you. Exactly. Yeah. We'll write yeah. we'll write songs sort of very basically and then they'll make it pretty you know or change the chord okay. to make it a bit different or something like that but now when you were young and and you say you were in high school did your parents ever say to you get uh, go and do something um that uh, get a get a, um, get a real security job or get a real <laughs> job <laughs> yes of course but um of course but i, I think my parents are open-minded i mean i went to I went to go study fine arts. So, I mean, that's also sort of get a real job. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But uh, but obviously those conversations came in later. Yeah. I mean, obviously the parents were, it wasn't really, it's not something that was realistic, I feel, like when we were younger to pursue a, uh, a career in music. But uh, I think we were just, Dom uh, Domastran. Yes, I have to think of that word in English now. We were just we refused to 
um <laughs> sorry my english is failing no, no 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 um, uh, yeah no i know what you mean it is like a, um not ignorant uh, but something you know we were just ignorant yeah 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 sing, single minded we're going to try our best to to do yeah. this you know uh yeah and i i mean that kind of makes me fe feel like i can because even now it's not really i mean the younger parents like if i look at kids that are sort of in their 20s there's a lot there's a lot more so parents that are supportive of it um but it's it's still not something i think parents are necessarily ecstatic about when their yeah. children <laughs> tell them they want to make a career in music you know it's so interesting because the past few interviews that i've done have been with people that um that have sort of broken the or, or, or stepped out of the box a little bit you know that sort of said hey i'm doing it my way or i'm not going to go the the normal route and and uh so it's it's so i i always think it's so brave when people just stick with it you know and say okay now this is what i'm going to do yeah i i, I also admire that in other people i i have to say i think it's easier when you're twin to do it yeah. than when you're 40 or something you know so yeah. i'm glad we did it way back then but sometimes <laughs> i still feel like maybe i should get a real job you know <laughs> okay uh, well now what uh, what is the dream what is the dream for you and and for the band and um what do you see for the future or the big wish what is the wish mm. um yeah i mean i think we like Yevels, it's our 15th uh year and with folk of Felicica, it's our 20th year um so I mean, I don't want to sound lame, but I would like it to carry on. Um, and that might sound easy, but the, the it's sort of a bit of a mind a struggle of the mind to stay relevant. So, you know, there's that kind of fear. So my go like, I think our goal is just to keep on doing what we're doing, you know, uh, not, and that's not easy is what I'm, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everyone's kind of diversified, you know, we're pretty aware of, of because i think with our group as far as i know we're the first group that sort of went independent with it a lot of our heroes and previous uh you know people before us they they were signed to major labels and stuff and i think there's i, I don't think that's great but so we're we're kind of in in uncharted territory on how to financially plan our our lives around a, a music career which um could be a bit of a struggle in in south south africa probably anywhere but i mean that's something that's top of mind uh yeah i mean there's no big there's no one specific thing that i can tell you is our goal i think just surviving and sort of getting better at what we do is kind of our goal and to keep doing what we're doing because music i guess it's not like sport uh you know, if if we look at Bob Dylan and like, is Neil Neil Diamond? Is he he's still alive? Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, who am I thinking about? Did Leonard Cohen pass away mm -hmm. a year or so ago? But I mean, those guys were all in their seventies and they're still rocking. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's rad. Yeah. ACDC. Yeah. 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 And it's it's like you're involving in your music or with your music, so that. Um, in time you know it's 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 that type of thing that you that you evolve and that you progress exactly in that. i can't but it's, it's going to be interesting because in focus Felicica it's quite energetic energetic and like finance and francois jump around a lot i would like to see that when they're 70 but oh, i mean okay. the stones are still <laughs> the stones are still doing it so it might be possible and yeah, yeah i think I, I i do i the music obviously changes as we get older i i don't mm. think we want to act like we're still young if you yeah. know what i mean so yeah, yeah we're, we're still just writing the music we like mm. or we'd like to hear yeah well it's it's great and I, I i wish you all the best for for your group for you as well as a songwriter and uh, may there be many more songs to come and uh my Jevels fantastic tour to europe i think that would be a great idea yeah we're we're actually playing the netherlands in september oh uh, really we've, we've played there before yeah the, i mean with afrikaans there's a bit of a, yeah. a bridge to the netherlands um 
And I think a lot of South Africans are actually moving there now. So Europe might may be seeing more of us. That would be great. Well, whenever you come to Vienna, you'll have to let me know. Oh, brilliant. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, thank you so much, Hunter. It was so lovely to talk to you. Have a lovely day and uh, keep warm in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, okay, bye. Bye.